The United States saw the Pokemon TCG printed for the first time in 1999. The first ever Pikachu card had 40 hit points. A little over 20 years later, we saw the new TCG set team up. The Pikachu here, Pikachu and Zekrom GX, has 240 hit points. How on earth did we get here? Let's talk about it. This past weekend was the Pokemon World Championships, which meant another short teaser trailer for a new Pokemon TCG feature. We've seen EXs, Legends, GXs, Tag Teams, and a whole handful of other Pokemon card gimmicks over the last two decades, but the new card type we'll be getting for the Galar region is Pokemon V. The trailer comically shows Pikachu and Zekrom, the 240 HP monster we were just talking about, cowering in fear at a 330 HP mystery mon coming to us in the near future. This is one of the most insane examples of power creep I've ever seen in a game of any kind before. What's power creep? The situation where updates to a game introduce more powerful units or abilities, leaving the older ones underpowered. It makes sense. If you want someone to spend their $50 bills, you want your new product to look better than the old product. And then the next one needs to be even better than that, and then wow, whoa, whoa, whoops, and then there's no going back to the way things were. Today we're gonna go through the entire history of the Pokemon TCG to figure out key moments where HP ballooned. Welcome, cause it's the wit's history of thickness. We're gonna look at two different kinds of Pokemon cards. One section for the highest HP on a basic Pokemon of any era, which are cards that you can play right from your hand down into the field. And then another section for every type of card, including evolutions and other multi-step card types. Traveling back in time means we're starting at 1999. Let's go. Right from the base set, we see a starting trend that sticks for a long, long time. 120 HP. Two cards have this holy health number. The basic Pokemon Chansey, and of course, Charizard, the most iconic Pokemon card of all time. Chansey makes perfect sense. It has by far the highest HP base stat in the first gen video games. Meanwhile, Charizard is toward the bottom of the top third? I don't get it, but they decided to make this boy thick, and that thickness definitely played a role in what made this card so desirable for fans and collectors from the start of the game's history. 120 was the iron unchangeable law for years. Every once in a while, cards would tie Charizard and Chansey in the top HP for any card. You could tell that the devs were actively trying to avoid going too HP crazy. Stuff was definitely getting stronger, but it wasn't getting bigger. Nothing even touches Chansey's basic Pokemon HP record. Not until Ruby and Sapphire in 2003, where a new Pokemon card type was revealed, the Pokemon EX. These cards were big and strong compared to the competition at the time, but at the expense of giving up two prize cards when being knocked out. Chansey's 120 HP basic record is finally tied for the first time by Chansey, EX. And while the first Ruby and Sapphire EX set only featured basic EX Pokemon, the second EX set, Sandstorm, added EXs for evolutions. This was the first great thick explosion. Overnight, the 120 barrier was absolutely shattered. 150, 160, and even 200 HP for Wailord EX. Now, having a lot of HP doesn't automatically make a card good, but this was definitely a new ceiling that Pokemon absolutely shattered. That said, once they did smash through the ceiling, Pokemon cards calmed down for a while. Chansey and Wailord EX hold their spots as top globs for another half decade. It wasn't until 2008 and Diamond and Pearl that we begin to see stuff match the current records. Great Encounters gave us another Whale Lord with 200 HP, but this time it wasn't even a souped up EX card. It was only worth one prize. The new level X mechanic functioned almost like an evolution, so Chansey's rule as the biggest basic Pokemon continued. However, in Legends Awakened, we finally saw a non-EX basic tie Chansey for the first time in almost 10 years, with Regigigas. None of the Platinum-themed sets or Harkold Soul Silver-themed sets would make that push. 
The Heart Gold Soul Silver block does give us the 130 and larger hit point legend Pokemon. And even though they're kind of like basic Pokemon, they weren't treated as basics and you needed to play multiple cards at once to get them down onto the field. It wasn't until Gen 5 that we'd see new ground in the HP arms race, but starting with black and white, they finally did it. Bang! The 120 HP barrier is officially dead for basic Pokemon. The two mascots, Reshram and Zekrom, are the first 130 HP basics. Not only were these Pokemon big, but they were both good, immediately having a competitive impact on the game and even playing a role in that year's top two world championship decks. I didn't run any that year. I guess that's why I got top eight. 130 would become the new big basic legendary Pokemon standard. But this wouldn't be the first time black and white would shake up the basics category because in 2012, next destinies, it was the second great explosion. EXs are back, except this time they have a capital EX instead of lowercase. Still two prizes, but this time they're all basic Pokemon only. Immediately, a massive influx of 180 HP basic EXs hit the scene, and in many ways they changed the game forever. I mean, think about it. It took us 12 years to move the max basic Pokemon HP up 10 points, and then in the blink of an eye we're up another 50. And Whale Lord will continue to dominate the right half of our screen, extending its streak to over 10 years. Until... X and Y. Mega Evolutions get their TCG equivalents, and that puts a whole new kind of thickness into the top slot at 230. But apparently all this mega nonsense got Whale Lord mega mad. So mad that it decided to take over both sides of the list. 250 HP Whale Lord EX washes ashore like a beached whale in 2015's Primal Clash set. And of course, continuing with this new wave of capital E, capital X Pokemon, they are all basics, so Whale Lord is king. And in a way, Whale Lord was kind of king for a minute. It took second place at the US National Championships with a deck that didn't even attack. It just soaked up damage with Whale Lord's massive body and ran opponents out of cards by milling their decks. And while that was certainly one of the most entertaining and exhausting games of Pokemon I've ever casted, a lot of people forget that this same Wheelord EX was a part of that year's World Championship winning deck as well. Jacob Van Wagner used a copy of it in his Blastoise deck, actually powering this colossal beast and attacking with it to win games. Whale Lord held the HP fort until Sun and Moon launched in 2017, giving us new GX Pokemon. Still two prize cards like the EXs, but these ones also had Z-moves called GX attacks. Why these aren't ZXs, I will never know. Sun and Moon brought us a lot of 250 HP Pokemon, but never over 250. That number wouldn't be broken until this year, 2019, with the release of the new Team Up GX cards, which feature two Pokemon on one card, give up three prize cards for being knocked out, and still unbelievably play to the field as a basic Pokemon. Several of these cards go past 250, but who better to set the new total than Whale Lord and Magikarp GX? Three freaking hundred. And that's where we are today. It truly is insane how big things have gotten, and as we know, it's only getting bigger from here. Pokemon's actually proud that they power creep, and especially 2012 onward, it really seems like they've embraced it. Pokemon card HP growth has gotten out of control lately. Now one thing I should clear up is that Pokemon uses rotations to determine which cards are legal in the competitive card game. So you almost will never see base set cards being played alongside the cards that are being used today. But even then, I'm in awe of the size of these lads. Back in 2005, there was a jumbo size Shadow Lugia promo card for Pokemon XD. Obviously not tournament legal, and that had 300 HP. That number was meant to represent something impossibly huge, but it looks like by 2020, we'll be breaking that with regular cards. Big numbers and big shiny cards get players and collectors alike buying, but it's just wild to me to see how fast things are inflating. Do they have a plan here? Or are cards just gonna keep growing and growing with no end in sight? Only time will tell. Barnacles, what could be worse than a giant Pokemon card? Oh, I know. Two 
giant Pokemon. Pokemon? Yeah, Jay Woods? I don't think this car can get much bigger. Nonsense!